Yo, what up gamers, I'm Vaproduck, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to play Sana in the AD carry role. Sana ADC recently got nerfed, but she still remains a more than viable hyperscaling bot lane pick. In this guide, I'm going to show you guys the best runes and items to build to succeed on Sana in Season 12, and teach you the most important things you need to know about Sana in order to flourish and carry games. Before we proceed, make sure to subscribe to my channel in order to view my future guides, and keep up with the best educational ADC content on YouTube. But now without further ado, let us begin. To understand Senna, the first thing we need to talk about is her passive. Senna's base AD doesn't skill per level, instead she absorbs mist which gives her 0.75 AD per stack. Early on in the game this will tend to keep up with most champions base AD scaling but as the game goes on and her mist generation accelerates while champion levels begin to slow, her base AD will start to scale like crazy. Mist will drop from random nearby dying minions which she can then pick up with her auto attack. She can also siphon mist from an enemy champion by hitting them twice, whether with auto attacks or abilities. When she siphons mist from an enemy champion, she will also deal a percentage of their health as additional physical damage, which later on in the game will add up to deal quite a punch. Additionally to gaining base AD, every 20 stacks of mist she gains 20 extra attack range and 10% crit chance. This is what really makes her scaling super scary, since she'll end up with a lot of crit chance regardless of her build, get way more AD from her passive than champions can get from their base stats, and end up with extremely high attack range. This attack range is infinitely scaling, so if the game goes long enough, literally no one will be able to touch her. As you can see, her passive is quite complex in what it entails, and it is the core part of her identity. Next up we have her Q. Sunny Q is a beam that can target either allies or enemies, dealing damage and a 2 second slow to enemies, and healing allies. It's an AoE ability, meaning it can be both a heal and a damage tool in one cast. Sunna also counts as an ally, so this will always heal her when she costs it. So to make good use of it, you'd rather wait until you're not full HP, unless maintaining full HP is not a priority at that point in time. Her Q has the same range as her auto attack range, so you typically want to combine it with an auto attack when harassing enemies in order to generate mist. What you want to lead with is a little situational. If you use Q first, you can slow the enemies and guarantee a follow up auto attack, so generally you want to do this. But if you're full HP, then you'll be wasting the heal. So if you're expecting thick return damage during the trade, you'll want to lead with the auto attack, then follow it up with Q if possible. If there's no chance to land Q, probably you didn't need the heal anyway because they didn't retaliate, so at least you just got a free auto attack worth of poke. Senna W is a skill shot which deals single target damage to the first enemy it hits, then roots in an AoE around it after a 1 second delay. This can also be used to snipe miss procs into enemies out of your range after previously hitting them with either a Q or an auto attack. As we base here with a kill's worth of gold in our pocket, we buy a serrated dirk, building towards Eclipse. Though Senna can build crit, lethality is currently a much better build for her and Eclipse is her best mythic. For runes on lethality Senna you'll want to run first strike which synergizes greatly with her bursty playstyle. Anytime you siphon mist from an enemy champion, you'll deal huge burst, amplified by first strike and also giving you additional gold for your efforts. Alongside it, you'll want to run magical footwear, biscuit delivery and approach velocity. This last one is especially good on Senna because it ensures you can always chase down enemy slowed by your Q to land that auto for your mist siphon. Especially if you've sniped an enemy through minions, then the extra movement speed can be crucial to catch up. For secondary runes, I advise running either Legend Alacrity or Bloodline alongside Cutdown. Senna's base HP is extraordinarily low even for an ADC, which gives her great synergy with Cutdown and you'll start dealing significant damage with it much earlier than other ADCs. You can further abuse this by starting Longsword instead of Doran's Blade in certain matchups where the extra HP is not necessary, to intentionally keep your HP bar as low as possible. Knowing your sustain will be enough to keep you safe. Sunna's so camouflages her and her allies around her, and increases their movement speeds. This is an excellent tool for moving across the map faster, and keeps you safer as the enemies won't be able to target you while camouflaged, unless they get super close to you. Senna thrives in matchups where the enemies can't easily engage onto her and kill her. We have a particularly good matchup this game because while Gragas has engage, Caitlyn doesn't have the follow up to easily burst me down. Most of her usefulness in lane comes from her harass, but this easily gets undone by my sustain, meaning we can keep slowly whittling them down while they can't do much to fight back, since all ins won't end well for them as we'll sustain any damage taken while they won't. As Gragas and J4 try to engage onto me here, I cast my E for movement speed to kite back with, even though the camouflage won't be much good, as Gragas was already in melee range and then I'm constantly revealing myself by attacking them anyway. It's a good reminder of Senna's early game weakness despite the good matchup, as after leaving them all on low HP, I don't have the burst to finish any of them off, and one moment of overaggression is all it takes to one-shot me. You have to remember that Senna is one of the squishiest ADCs in the game and has very little survivability early on. Getting through the early game on her requires very respectful gameplay even while ahead. 
You have the tools to build up solid leads in certain matchups, but one misstep can be all it takes to bring that all crashing down. On the previous back, we built a longsword headed towards our Eclipse, and also built a tier. This will later build into Muramana, which synergizes amazingly with Lethality Senna and gives her all the mana she needs. This is why I don't advise running Presence of Mind, as I find the Mana Restore is very overkill when combined with Muramana. We are now soon hitting level 6, which will give us our ultimate. Senna's ultimate is a global ability which deals damage to enemies in an AoE, and shields allies in a much larger AoE. As we level that up, we should now be on the lookout for cross-map fights, where our ultimate might turn the tides of the fight. I'm a little slow to realize, but the sound of Sign Ultimate indicates there's a strong chance Gangplank may be about to die, which his HP bar above the minimap backs up. Despite my initial lack of awareness, I fire my ultimate in time to damage sound and shield Gangplank, completely turning the dive around and getting us a kill while saving Gangplank's life. You can't be expected to constantly look at other lanes while farming, but paying attention to the map and your allies' HP bars can indicate situations where your allies might be in danger. A quick look can then tell you whether your ultimate could save them, or if your allies would die anyway. As we get into a heavy trade with Caitlyn, I pop my E in order to reduce the damage she can deal with auto attacks. And using my summoner heal and Q heal, I ensure the talent comes nowhere near dying. As Vagar traps Zillion, I start autoing him to try and deal as much damage as I can while he's focused on Zillion. Then, punishing Gragas' overaggression while knowing Vagar has no cooldowns, we're able to take him down. Unfortunately, here I forget that I'd already seen Caitlyn place a trinket in this brush during the start of the previous fight. Realizing that in time though, I know she's going to cancel my back, so I start trading back onto her in advance, and heavily chunk her out. Unfortunately, I simply have too much gold to stay, and choose to back immediately rather than greeting for a better back. As you may be starting to realize, Senna is quite unique for an ADC, and especially for a hyper carry. She skills like crazy, but a lot of her value to her team is just how much she can support and enable them, rather than dealing crazy amounts of damage herself at all stages of the game. In fights, it is important to try and find angles as much as possible to both damage enemies and heal allies, and during downtime you'll want to keep your teammates constantly topped up on HP. And remember, whenever your ultimate is up, you want to pay attention to the map for potential snipes or saving your allies. When you slow an enemy with Q, this is the easiest time for you to hit W. This can be a safer way of siphoning mist from them than staying in range for an auto, or it can be an excellent engage tool if you're confident you win the fight. One thing to remember is that you should always prioritize mist over farm. While ideally you can get both, Senna skills far harder with mist than she does with gold, so when forced to choose between the two, you should always rather go for mist. Likewise, if you have to choose between siphoning mist from an enemy champion or getting a lost hit, you should always choose to go for the trade, so long as you won't get stomped for it. 
Here I want to back and spend my gold without risking greeting for another wave in case something happens and forces me to stay in lane after, but a zillion throws a Q onto the wave despite my recall and I'm forced to stay unless I want to miss the entire wave. And something does happen as Talon comes for a dive and forces me to stay. Remember that healing allies during their kills is an easy way to try and pick up free assists. Here they cancel my back at their own peril and predictably it ends up backfiring for them. One thing to note about Senna's mist drop on minions is that she has a far higher chance of dropping mist on minions she doesn't lost hit. So the great thing about this is that she can happily hand over a bunch of farm to her team without caring about the lost gold, since in exchange for getting less gold she'll get more mist instead. One easy way to boost your mist gain is to hang around your jungler as he farms camps. Especially Krugs have the potential to drop a lot of mist per camp, and in general the jungle will drop a lot of mist as your jungler breezes through his camps. As the enemies refused to finally let me finish the recall I started 2 minutes ago, I'm forced to punish them for wasting all their cooldowns on Thazillion. Unfortunately you can see here how little Senna can contribute to a fight when she's out of mana as I am unable to save Talon. Finally getting to back I return into lane with a fully complete mana moon and look to shove out bot lane before grouping mid. If your mid laner stays mid rather than letting you take mid farm, you always want to farm bot lane waves that are on your side of the map. And if safe, shove them onto the enemy side, in order to keep your farm up. Seeing a fight happen around Drake, I immediately channel my ultimate to buff up my caught out teammates as much as I can and deal damage to the bunched up enemy team. With the further help of my heals, Talon ends the fight almost at full HP despite tanking a lot of damage. While my team rotates to top lane to gank Sion, I shove out the enemy midway first in order to keep up my farm. I then move on to the enemy turret because the top lane situation doesn't seem to be escalating and I can force someone to come mid to respond to my push. Remember that though you're a support ADC, you're still an ADC, and you don't want to fall too far behind in items without even getting missed in exchange. You also don't want to waste your time following up on dumb plays from your allies that would cost you a lot of farm, not have a guaranteed outcome, and potentially get you killed alongside them. As Zillin gets cut out by a nice Gragas flank here, I don't bother trying to help him. As much as I would love to, I know that any damage I would deal would be completely inconsequential in this circumstance, and it would also just make me liable to potentially get caught. It's an important skill to know exactly when you have an opening to actually help your team, and when you would just simply be getting yourself caught alongside them and just dying for no reason. By minimizing these potential deaths, you will reduce the amount of gold that the enemy team could get off of killing you, and you will also stay on the map alive longer, getting more XP and more gold, and in Senna's case, more mist.
Now would also be a good time to mention two things that I forgot, which is that Senna Q can target wards and also, you know, kill them. And also the fact that her Q cooldown also gets reduced when she's auto-attacking. Oh, right, and it can also hit turrets. Now you can see here that I just gladly let Talon take all this farm, knowing that it'll just drop more mist for me. Although the gold would be nice, it's also even more nice to have that gold on somebody else if it's also going to be giving me something else in exchange. In this case, mist. Now as I'm sitting on a lot of gold, I really need to spend that and so I start backing and spamping my team away. I don't want them to fight, I just want the base and spend my gold. There will eventually come a time where I'll talk about the boot choices on Senna, but for now, even though we're like 20 minutes in, I'm still gonna be skipping boots and buying a fire cannon instead. Fire cannon is super nice on Senna because at this stage of the game, your poke with auto attack and Q starts to deal quite a bit of damage. And obviously you have a lot of range to poke with, and with Fire Cannon, that range is really enhanced, and your poke just becomes even more oppressive to deal with. However, you need to know when it's safe to go for that poke. Here, I would love to poke out that Vigar, but I can't do it without getting caught in his cage range. So, for now, we just play it safe, and potentially, yep, end up poking the J4 here. After I single-handedly wipe out the entire enemy team, I decide that maybe it's time to Baron. Unfortunately, Senna is actually not that great at doing Baron. Although you do a lot of damage to Senna, a lot of it is just poke. And your DPS is actually not that great uh, until at least, you know, quite a bit later into the game. When you get much more base AD from your mist. And even then, it's nothing spectacular. This means that Senna is not the, the best suited ADC for dealing with tanks, and also will have particularly slow barons. As I finally grab Boots, I decide to go for Boots of Swiftness. Since Senna's attack speed scaling is not that amazing, especially with this build, there is not much point in going for Berserker's Greaves. Boots of Swiftness allow her to play more aggressively by getting into people's range, and also allow her to kite and get herself into safety a lot more easily. You can also go for Mercury's Treads should you need some Amar or especially some Tenacity, and Ninja Tabi will also always be really good into comps with full AD. As the alcoholic without a soul decides to start contesting my red buff, you can see that my burst is actually really high, as mentioned. But once I've blown all my abilities, especially my passive and my Q, there's not much damage left and my DPS becomes a lot lower.
After punishing Caitlyn's overaggression here, I use Q on the wave to heal myself back up, and then disengage from the Vagar, playing it slow. Although I could potentially still win the fight against Vagar, I would rather just play it slow, wait for my Q to come back up, and just look for a fight again once that is there. So now might also be a good time to mention that I forgot to mention that Senna's passive also steals about 10-20% to of her target's movement speed for like 1 or 2 seconds. Yeah, so yeah, I'm very forgetful, but in all fairness, I mean, it's hard to keep track of like 10 different passives on 10 different abilities, man. So whose fault is it I forgot, really? Mine or Riot's? Unfortunately, Talon gets a little too excited here, which just slightly delays our ending. But in the end, as I'm running for my life, Gangclang manages to TP in and get the win. So guys, that was my Season 12 Senna Guide. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this in the future, guys. And I will see you guys on the next video. Later gamers.